Hi there, welcome to this build of a Clancy Aviation 40 inch wingspan Speedy B. We've got to quite an advanced stage with the build now and we're ready to start building the turtle deck on the back of the wing and the fuselage. Now this plane is a two piece structure, the wing comes off and leaves the fuselage but the wing has the nacelle and the engine and a little bit of the forward section of the turtle deck and the rear section of the turtle deck is left on the fuselage. But what we need to do is we need to build that turtle deck in one piece and then we take our razor saw and we actually cut the turtle deck down the middle there to divide the two pieces. Now in the last video we made an effort to fix this wing nice and securely, only temporarily but securely and accurately onto the fuselage so it would allow us to build that turtle deck nice and accurately and that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now if we take a quick look at the, um, the plan on the wall behind, now you'll have noticed on the fuselage we already have this former in place when we pulled the two sides together and we have these tail pieces or these terminal pieces. So what we've got to do is we've got to put in three formers and this one is fairly straightforward. These two here are where they're sandwiched together and then we cut down to separate the two pieces. So this forward piece will be attached to the wing. What we need to do, makes this a little bit more complicated, is I'm going to make um, like a, a, a tongue on this forward um, former here that slots in to the rear one. And that will lock in the back of the wings and hold them in place. Because the whole thing about this is we're not going to be having the elastic bands to hold the wings on. We're having the bolts and locking mechanism at the front and we're having this sort of tongue that slots into the former at the back. So we'll have a look at that in more detail in a bit. Now the formers, you can see them here, but we also get some templates that come with the plans. I'm going to be using these templates to measure up and to roughly make the formers, but I'm not going to be cutting out the, you can see there's, there's holes, where the different um, uh, pieces of balsa go, the stringers, that's the word I was looking for, where the stringer goes and the top and uh, this piece on the side. The reason I'm not cutting that out is because when I've made formers before and cut out the slots for stringers, you often find they're not quite as accurate as you would like. So I'm going to make the formers, I'm going to put them in place, I'm going to eye them up, just sand them and get them so they're lovely and in line and then I will mark up where I'm going to put the stringers and cut them out actually on the model and then we'll get them nice and accurate exactly where we want them. So now I'm going to start making those formers and getting them just temporarily slotted in place and see how they look and we'll come back and see that once it's done. Right, well, I thought it was time for an update, and I think it's going to be difficult to show you, So, um, but I'll do my best. I've got this former in now. It's, it's not glued in. I'm going to take it out in a second and show you. And I've got a piece of balsa the right width with the former where it needs cutting. And I haven't done that yet because I just wanted to eye this up and make sure that it was uh, the, the right size and curved round correctly. They're all the same height, which is good. I mean, I'm expecting to profile these a little bit to, uh, to get them so they are totally smooth with each other. But anyway, now this one, you can see if I take it out, it's comprised of three mil ply and then the, uh, and three mil balsa or one eighth ply and one eighth balsa. And I've got a slot in here, and I've, I've made it sort of a composite out of the two materials because I want to make it as light as possible, but also I want this so I can sand it easy to get it the right shape, and I can cut out the bits for the stringers. I've 
cut out the middle bit to allow the control rods to go through there and also just to make sure that it, it is light. Now this is the former that's going to stay in the fuselage, not the wing. And I've got a tongue of 3mm ply which goes through that at an angle like that. And this tongue is going to be connected to the former that goes on the back of the wing like that. And so if I just take that out, if I put that through, so the back of the wing like that will slot into that former to lock in the back of that wing. Now I'm going to glue this in in a minute and if we just put that back in. Oops, let me just get that right. Okay, so that's in there. I've got a couple of triangular bits to hold it at the right angle. Now, if I turn this round a little bit on the side, we can see the plywood here coming down and touching on that doubled longer on there. And I'm going to be strengthening this down here, but I will do that in a bit and I will show you what I've done there when I've got the wings off so you can see. But I just want to transfer the, transfer the forces from this, the wing lifting it up, down into the actual lower structure of the fuselage just to try and, uh, and, and make it a little bit stronger. But I'll move it around there and you can see there the gap now for the control rods to come, to come through. So I'm going to start to fix the rear former in first and again I've got another uh, triangular piece there to put that just at the right angle and I'll probably take the wings off and I'll do the strengthening and then I've got this former which actually will slide up and down so I can slide it to the right position make sure the wings nice and tight held down and then glue that into place to make sure that this is a really nice tight fit. One of the problems I've got is going to be when I glue these in place making sure that the, uh, let me just take this out, see that will fit in there like that and there is scope for it to go up and down and, uh, and the tongue will go through. I need to be careful that I don't actually just CA everything together because at the end of the day this needs to come off with the wings and the rest of the uh, of the turtle deck. So I'm going to have to put plastic between all of this and be really careful. Maybe just tack it and then glue it uh, more solidly when they're apart. But I'll get on and do that now and we'll have a look in a bit and see how it develops. Hopefully I've explained that well and you can see enough. Right, well I've now got this former glued in place and you can see the triangular pieces. It's important the grain runs that way, makes them a lot stronger than if the grain was running up because it could just split. So I've got that on both sides. I've also put a little bit of triangular stock, soft balsa, on the underside here. And the biggest thing, you can see these gussets on both sides of the fuselage and that will really hold it quite well and I will be putting a little bit of thin triangular stock to join between the gusset and this former as it, the plywood as it comes down so but I thought I'd show you without that on just so you could see it better but I'll put that on in a minute now I'm really mindful of not adding too much weight while I'm doing this but we have to remember there were gussets here anyway on the plans which I probably won't put on now for the dowels that would go through so there were dowels there was a weight of that as well so this will be slightly heavier but I don't believe it will add a great deal to the weight but we do need to try and keep the weight down as much as possible so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the wing back on and then we can try and get the uh, the formers done on the uh, on the actual the, the wing and the fuselage right well I've now got the wing back on nice and secure in the correct location. I've slipped some plastic under the back here that comes up as far as the slot. Now 
I'm ready to glue this in place or at least tack it in place and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that former there I'm going to put the tongue through there we go and when I tack this I'm going to tack it with CA I'm going to need to push the back of the wing down just to make sure it's nice and secure onto the, the fuselage I'm going to pull the tongue up and just make sure that the tongue is nice and tight on the top of the slot on this rear former on the fuselage just to make sure that it's all tensioned right for, for when it's done. I appreciate that there's going to be some strengthening needed on the back of this wing here because at the moment we've just got this quarter inch piece here in the ribs and there is going to be pressure coming up on the back of this wing. Right, well, I'm just strengthening up this area now and what I've done is I've put some balsa here between the two ribs and I've laminated that cross grain so it gives it quite a bit of uh, strength and the reason I want that strength is because I'm going to put these gussets from the former uh, across onto kind of almost to the edge of the ribs here hopefully transferring some of that load and uh, just strengthening that. I still, uh, so I'm going to glue that in a second, still haven't glued in the tongue. I've got a little bit of uh, timber there just so that when I do glue it I'll probably epoxy it and that will just give it a little bit more uh, sort of area to glue on. So I'm going to get all this glued up and then I'm going to get this other former done and start to look at getting the uh, the stringers ready. You can see this is really starting to take shape now and I'm quite pleased with how it's looking. I've got this top piece on of the, the turtle deck and sanded down from this top piece to the lower on and putting a bevel on this top piece and that now blends in quite nice. It's still going to need a little bit more sandy but I'm really pleased with how it's looking. Now we're going to move on and do the stringers. And this brings me to a point that's kind of bothered me with these plans all the way through. It's not a big deal, but if you see we've got cap strips, cap strips, cap strips, and on the underside we have cap strips at the front. Now there's no cap strip on this back shown on the plans. When we come to do the turtle deck, there's a piece of timber that just sets in there, uh, both sides of course, and then we've got our stringer that comes along like that. Now with this piece, if we build it as per plan, when we're covering this, that's fine, we can fix onto this, but there's nothing along this edge here to, yeah, turn that around so you can see, nothing here that you can actually fix to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a cap strip on and I'm going to follow this line from this cap strip down to the end and I will extend it and bring it into the bottom of this uh, this um, stringer. I mean it's quite a wide stringer but I guess it's still a stringer. And then we'll have a place for the, the, the covering to fix onto because the fit covering is not going to hold on this single rib and in, in actual fact we've got a gap there so we need to do something about that. What I've done is I cut a piece of balsa same size shape sorry as the rib and I clamped it on like that and then I just used the scalpel and just trimmed the top off just came down and shaved it off and then I used the a sanding stick just to get it right. So now that is set down and a cap strip will go on there nicely but I think if we don't put a cap strip on there, like I say it's not shown on the plans, I think if we don't do it we're going to have problems when we come to covering. So I'm going to get this set in now like I said and then with this one there's a slot in the back I'm going to hold it, I might even use a pin, I don't know, maybe not, probably hold it where I need it like that and then just mark uh, mark the, um, the formers and then just cut out with a razor saw a couple of slots and then use the scalpel just to nick it out so that sits in and it sits in more or less flush 
or it's sanded flush anyway, so it wants to be very slightly proud. So I will get on and do that now. And uh, oh, one other thing, I've glued this top piece on all of the formers except for this uh, back one on the wing or the front one out of these two. I put a bit of plastic in and along so I could glue the back bit, but I can't work out how I can glue this without it gluing everything together. So that is going to remain unglued until I take my razor saw and actually separate these and then I can, uh, I can glue it. But it should be okay. This turtleneck is now more or less finished and it's looking great. It's really given the plane a good shape. And I've put in the um, uh, cap strips down either side, as I said, which will certainly make the covering a lot neater and a lot nicer. But uh, I'm really pleased with, with how that's looking. What I need to do now though, is do the cuts between the two formers and get this wing separated off the fuselage. And there's a little bit more gluing to do around here because obviously I couldn't glue those stringers because I'd end up gluing the two formers together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to make those cuts, separate it and see how it looks. Well, I've now got them separated and I can tell you, I was honestly a little bit worried how it would come apart and whether I'd stuck everything together. And uh, I was quite relieved when it came apart lovely, really easily. I just used my razor saw to cut this uh, top piece of balsa and then I used a scalpel with a long blade, number 26 blade on a four handle, just to work my way down cutting through the stringers and it came apart really, really easily. There was a little bit here where I just dropped a drip of uh, CA where I had to just go along between just a very small section, but actually it wasn't a problem. And I'm just really pleased with how that came apart. And it just slots together now really nicely. I've still got the, the bolts and the legs to do at the front at some point, but this back bit is really, really solid. It doesn't move. I'm so pleased with how that's, uh, with how that's worked out. Now, we've added a bit of extra balsa here. We haven't got the dowel that we would have had with the bands, which would have added weight and, and won the gussets, but we've added gussets. We've got strengthening in the, the rear of the turtle deck here. But I honestly believe it hasn't added a great deal of weight. I've tried to be economical. If, uh, I mean, I have no idea where the CG is gonna fall on this and whether it's gonna be nose heavy or tail heavy. But when we look at the plans, we can see the servos are quite a long way back. The battery's up the front. Both of these, we can, we can move the servo forward or we can move the, the, the battery back. So I think there's a lot of scope to, uh, to, to deal with wherever the natural CG falls so that we make sure we get spot on where we need to be by moving those components. Well, I'm gonna draw this video to a close now. And I tell you, I've really enjoyed doing this section and getting this turtle deck built. And as I've said before, you can really see it starting to take shape. And I hope you've enjoyed watching it and found it interesting. And please come back and see how we get on in the build of this fantastic Clancy Aviation Speedy B.